Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today, we're both studying Matthew chapter number four. So let's go ahead and let's get started. This is an interesting chapter because this is kind of when the ball gets rolling in Jesus's ministry. Jax, recap this chapter for us and tell us, tell us what happened. Okay, so um, the story starts off and Jesus, is, he's been fasting for 40 straight days with no food and no water in the desert. And so during these 40 days, he's been tempted by Satan, uh, the devil, um, to, uh, to do different things and uh, sort of worship him. Um, and the devil offers him things, but Jesus knows none of that is good. And um, he has to remain steadfast and not fall into the temptations of the devil. And so, um, as a reward for not falling into Satan's temptations, Satan finally leaves and gives up because um, he doesn't think he can convince Jesus to worship him. And then the devils come down and they feed him and they take care of him. Okay. The, the devils come down? I mean, the angels. Yeah, that, that, and that's a big difference to know, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. That's a lot better. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, anyway, um, in this next section, Jesus goes and um, he picks out his disciples. And this is where my takeaway comes from. And uh, so Jesus, he goes down to the river and he picks out some fishermen and he says, Hey, you fishermen, come be fishers of men for me. And... Um, uh, come hear about me. And so uh, they go and they become his first disciples. Then in this third section, Jesus, he's starting to get really famous and he's going around um, Jerusalem and people starting to hear about him and the miracles that he can do. So they start bringing all their uh, sick people and their hurting people and their demon possessed people and Jesus heals all of them and this uh, huge... Um, I guess you could say, I don't know. It was like he a, heals them all. Yeah, it was like an outdoor hospital with only one doctor, and the doctor had the cure for every disease. I mean, it's it was pretty impressive. Fingers. That's right. All right, let's talk about, just real quick, you and I talked about this, the type of disciples that Jesus picked. Uh, were these normal types of disciples or abnormal? Abnormal. Okay, why? Because he didn't go to the temple and choose the most religious people there. He went down to the lake and he just found a bunch of fishermen. Okay. So for us, um, when Jesus is calling these disciples, it, it probably gives us a great deal of comfort because if Jesus was not looking for and did not require his disciples to be at a certain level of maybe how they thought or how much money they made or how much respect they commanded or what. If he's not looking for that as the qualification for discipleship, instead he's going down and he's finding everyday average workers. Does that mean that today, what kind of workers is he also able to use? Anybody. Anybody. Does that include us? Of course. Absolutely. Now I want to make a connection for you. Let's, let's connect Advent. Okay, so Jesus is beginning in this chapter his earthly ministry. So the word Advent means the coming of something or coming of someone. It means the arrival. It means the appearing, but it also means the setting into place. And so this is after 30 years of being, of, of being raised and trained and working as a carpenter. Now Jesus is beginning his ministry. So he is being set in place. Now, in, uh, in John chapter number one, that's kind of where our Advent book has been hanging out. I want you to listen to a passage. So John 1, 14 said, so the word became human. I like, I like that translation. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. And so what you've got here is John chapter 1 telling us that God sent his son to make his home with us. Well, here's the dangerous thing about our home. Our home operates different than the way heaven operates. Is there sin in heaven? No. Is there sin in our home? Yes. So our home right now is earth. There is no sin in heaven, but there is sin on earth. And Jesus went from heaven to earth. And one of the ways we know that is because Jesus is now coming head on with sin's open door, sin's little brother, temptation. Now, 
when Jesus enters into temptation, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm, we're not going to talk a whole lot about this because this is what I'm preaching on on Sunday, but I want you to recognize this. Jesus was tempted, but did Jesus sin? No. So is sin, is temptation a sin? No. So it is not a sin to be tempted, but it would be a sin to fall to that temptation, mm -hmm. right? So so now the, the scene shifts from Jesus, who was tempted and is faithful, to now Jesus going and calling out people to be faithful to him. Now, here's what I like about this. When Jesus calls the disciples, Jesus has a way of proving himself more important than anything else. So when he calls the disciples, look in verse number 20, it says, and they immediately left their nets and followed him. So Jesus is showing himself. There's something within them that believes that Jesus is more important than their nets. And just remember, this is no small move. They're not just giving up their day. When they give up their nets, they're giving up a lifetime of wages for a new way of life that they don't have any promises how it's going to turn out. See, the disciples did not know where this new life with Jesus was going to lead them, but they did know who it would start with. So they didn't know where they were going to go, but they did know who they were going to follow. Jesus is, because Jesus's command was, follow me. It was a command and an invitation. Now, I want us to remember this. Not every believer. So what you talked about a while ago was these were average, ordinary people. So not every believer is uh, is going to be called to like full-time vocational ministry. So not everybody watching is going to end up on some uh, in some other continent living in a mud hut as a missionary. Not everybody listening is going to be a pastor of a church one day. But listen, all of us are called out of what we're doing. We're called to be full-time followers of Jesus. And, and listen, Jesus is calling fishermen, so he said that he would make them what? Fishers of men. I imagine if he were calling bricklayers, he would have called them builders of men. So like, I, what I'm saying is, I don't think, I don't think that what Jesus was emphasizing was the fishing. I think Jesus was emphasizing, you follow me and whatever you have been doing, I want to now take what you are and, and kingdom focus it. And so uh, what we have here is Jesus taking these guys in verse 22 and immediately like, they left the boat and their father and they and they followed him. So what we've got is Jesus showing himself as as he is worth giving up everything for. So uh, so like when these guys are giving up all they have, why do they give it all up? Well, the answer is simple. The simple answer is they're giving it all up for Jesus himself. Now, why is this important? Because the God who was in heaven left heaven to join us. And for us to join him, we've got to be willing to forsake what we've got for him. I'm going to tell you one of the hardest things to do. The hardest things to ever do will be to receive something with your hands clenched firmly around something you've already got. So in order to receive him, I got to open my hands and let go of what I've got in order to get. So in this world, if I'm going to follow Jesus, I've got to be willing to open up and say, Jesus, I give up everything else. It's all you now. I, I'm giving myself to you. By the way, Jesus gave himself for us. We're doing what he has done for us. I want you to keep reading and keep pushing ahead, preparing your heart for, for Christmas. All right, we love you. Keep reading. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.